One of my predictions for 2023 was that something big is going to happen in AI for IT services and MSPs. Have I found it? We talk to the CEO of PIA, Christian Pacheco, today on this bonus episode of The Business of Tech. Does coordinating meetings and help desk calls frustrate you and frustrate your clients? Wouldn't it be easier if you could automate this process and it integrated with ConnectWise Manage or with Autotask? TimeZest is scheduling automation that gives you control of your schedule and removes the frustration of calendar ping pong. As the only solution specifically designed for MSPs, it integrates with your PSA to schedule appointments right in your workflow. And the best part? You can try it for free. Visit timezest.com slash MSP Radio and mention MSP Radio for 10% off your first year of TimeZest. Well, Christian, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, really appreciate the uh, invitation to the, uh, to the cast. AI is something that we that everyone's talking about right now, right? Obviously, the, your your timing on a launch couldn't be better because it's top of mind for everybody. And I think the first thing that I have to know is is okay. So, what does PIA AI Desk do? <laughs> Let's start there. Yeah, look, um, it wasn't intentional, right? Like we actually got lucky in terms of the timing of it all. So, um, you know, we're just building this great little automation tool for our MSP. Um, and you know, before you before you know it, it was doing some really really good things. Like the platform uh, itself, you know, provides automation services and RPA services to to MSPs to allow them to really streamline the pain points of their service desk, um, especially when it comes to to repetitive tasks. So it it not only streamlines the 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 administration behind the task, but it actually stream it actually end to end does the work for you. Um, so, you know, it logs into the client's environment. It actually completes the new user creation, the password reset and, and acts as a true RPA. Now you threw in a couple of this, so it's an RPA and an AI agent, like help, help me cl- clarify a little bit about what it's actually doing. Yeah, sure. So if you break it down, it's actually made up of a few components. So we've got our AI and our ML sort of natural language parsing, um, and you know you've got the data science behind the tickets, right? So we've got actually peer crawling through the information, crawling through, crawling through the data, and um and providing you know the science behind it to the orchestration platform and the RPA engine. So you know based off the the data we receive, um, peer is actually learning um, every night. You know it doesn't learn on the flight; it learns um, sort of in a couple of hour period every night. It teaches itself about what's come in. Um, and uh, identifies different data sets and different communication uh, paths from not only the MSP, but their end customer. Um, and then, you know, so, you know, the next day, it's actually learning little bits at a time to improve its confidence accuracy in what it can tell you and what it can help you with. Um, and then you've got the RPA side of it, which is the, you know, the actual automation piece uh, where Peer is physically um, performing the work for your service desk. Um, and at the moment, we're doing that what's in what's called an engineer assist mode. Um, so, you know, the, the engineer actually works with PR um, to perform these activities at a, you know, much accelerated rate compared to them, them, them doing them themselves. Besides the fact that they can do it at an accelerated rate, they can actually do multiple tickets at the same time without having to log into the client, you know, different client environment. So, you know, from a security perspective, it's, um, it's actually really, really handy. Um, so, you know, for example, we've got a, a great demo that we do, which we show someone that's not technical doing, um, or not overly technical doing six tickets with PR at the same time in under 12 minutes. Okay, there's a lot there. So let me let me start at the the front end of this. So so I'm an engineer and I'm working with 
uh, with Pia. I now I can actually give it instructions, and it does the natural la- language parsing around what I've given. Is that that a that a, a good understanding of what's going on there? Yeah. So it does it. It does it around what you've you know the request you've put on. Like so, Pia's in terms of its front end, it's a chatbot. Um, so you can talk to it directly, but it's also got integrations into the PSA, right? So when you know your tickets coming into AutoTask or ConnectWise or Kaseya BMS or you know all the other PSAs, we've got some a few in, in um, integrations. You know, Peer will actually pop up and say, so it'll read the ticket for you, and it'll say, hey, I think I can help you with this, um, and it'll actually. Um, recommend at a confidence with 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 a degree of confidence, um, you know, a solution for the engineer. Um, and then everything's done through the chatbot itself. So like the engineer then communicates with Pia. Pia's like, hey, I think this is a new user. Do you want to do this? And the engineer sort of performs a task through the bot without having to leave the PSA screen. Interesting. So so one of the questions that I've learned that I need to understand more is is tell me a little bit about the model. How is it how is it learn you know, how does it interact and what are what are the kind of the restrictions you've put on it in terms of what it'll do? It's specifically modeled for service desk data. Right? So it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna at the moment, it's not gonna go out there and, you know, try and do some uh analysis on, you know, things that aren't included in, you know, in our sort of um, remit sort of thing, right? So like we're focused on level one, level two engineer tickets and and alerts predom- like predominantly, right? But, you know, it'll do the analysis on all your ticket data and then start classifying them as, you know, level one, level two, and it'll, it'll give you a confidence rating um, in terms of its ticket understanding. So like if it's simple, if it's a simple thing like where a ticket comes in from a customer saying, hey, I, I need a, you know, I can't log in. Um, then Peer will actually automatically say, I think this, you know, I'm 92% sure based on your other tickets that this is a password reset, right? And then it'll give you the next rating. It'll say, you know, we're 70, you know, if it's not, if it's not that, 70% of the time could be a network issue, right? So then it sort of does the analysis on um, the options of, of diagnosis and resolution. So it's trying to classify the tickets and give appropriate responses based on that no, that knowledge set and that data set that you've mined. Is that that fair assessment of what it's doing? Absolutely. And it's not only doing it based on the categorization of the ticket from the end user. So like, you know, this could be fields that they select and they think, oh, it could be this. And they select and they categorize the ticket. It is looking at that up, you know, to some extent, but then it's actually looking at the body of the ticket and the comments and the context. And it's doing its own sort of, um, it's got its own formula to wrap around um, uh, giving you a, you know, the confidence rating and the response you require. Interesting. Does it then turn around and actually write code? Is that what it's doing for the RPA engine? Is it writing code? Is it making recommendations? How does it turn around and do that? It's not writing code on the fly. What it, what it is doing is it actually goes into our RPA library. So, you know, we've got hundreds of tasks, hundreds of activities, automations, and integrations. And it actually identifies exactly, you know, with that confidence rating, what it thinks it needs to do next. And then it actually pulls that, we call it a package or activity, um, and gives it to you as a, you know, as a graphical option option in the in the chatbot for you to execute. So, you, you know, you come up with like a web form where you click a next button, and it's very simple for you to use. And, and it's doing that in certain RMMs, or is that something that, that you're doing, that you're executing yourself? Yeah, so we've got our own agent. Um, we do work, we do integrate with the major RMM platforms. Um, but, you know, we've got an agent that works side by side. Um, from a performance perspective, uh, because, you know, our agent's sort of native to Peer, it's built for it. Um, it, it, the performance is a lot better with our agent than it is with, with RMMs at the moment. Um, but yeah, you know, the future sort of looks, we're, we're looking at the future and we're sort of looking at it going, well, if we had access to develop on, you know, RMMs and partner, partner with these big guys, then we could actually make the, R, you know, the RMM work really, really well with Peer. Oh, I see. Okay. But, but right now you 
actually don't need them, right? You they're, no, they're actually, you them. Uh, and there's there's a certain simplicity to the fact that you wouldn't have to develop for every single one of them and instead just do it yourself. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so I mean, it, you've talked a little bit about the limitations. Give me a sense of the guardrails that have been put on it so that it stays within its realm of what it's capable of doing. Yeah. So look, it's because of the way it's trained and because of the. Um, you know, the amount of data we put in for the specific training, it, it's sort of not going to go outside of its wheelhouse, so, so to speak, right? Um, it, it's It's got a lot of future promise in terms of future product, future development. But but right now, in terms of what we're, what we're getting it to do, is just simply putting it, getting it to do ticket triage in terms of automation of triage. We're getting it to do level one and level two tickets um, and identify some key alerts and basic, basically communicate on that. Um, the future of PIA, we're, we're building out a, um, a PIA NOC, a PIA SOC, and a PIA firewall product in the next, say, eight, eight months or so. Um, and we're not actually building a NOC or a SOC or a firewall. We're, pro we're, providing you, we're providing the MSP with the services around those environments. Right, so if you've already got your own knock, your own sock, you plug peer in, and that peer is helping that team, you know, uh, perform activities, identify tasks, and we're going to be doing it with the major products and vendors. Same thing with the firewall, right? So we we want to get you know the top three or four firewalls, top three or four backup um, and DR um, appliances, and work directly with those to provide not only the response, you know, they, those got but those um, products provide the response really well. This has happened. And sometimes they even give you a playbook. This is what you should do. We want Peer to pick that ticket up and actually do the work. You know, so if you're a, your SOC engineer is out having a coffee um, and you know an alert comes in and he can't get back to his laptop, or he can't remote in from where he is, you know, Peer can actually pick it up, identify, isolate, and resolve, all whilst, you know, that guy's having, you know, he's on his lunch break. Um, and as we know, in terms of especially for security, um, you know, whether it's two minutes or an hour makes a big difference. Um, so that that's sort of the future of PM where we see it um, in, in, in sort of eight months uh, time. But I, I want to clarify a little bit when, when you talk about triage, you're actually talking about augmenting the engineers, right? You're not talking about actually plugging it directly and interface with end users. Is that the, which one of those in what direction are you taking so, it? So at the moment, we're doing triage in terms of, um, you know, ticket allocation, time sheeting. Um, so just managing the triage fun function and then allocating to engineers and boards, right? Um, so that's, that's in the engineer assist mode. We've had customers globally ask us if we can actually just sort of do direct, tri direct triage from the customer. So communication directly from the customer in terms of having the peer chatbot customer facing and bypassing that first triage level to the engineer. So that's something that we're looking at with definitely the capabilities there. Um, but right now we just want it working um, really, really well with the MSP and the engineer. Well, how much, how much danger of hallucination is in that? Because I mean, one of the things that we've been looking a lot in these bots is its ability to be incredibly confidently wrong. How are yeah. you mitigating against hallucination, particularly as you're thinking about interfacing with end users? Yeah, so that's that's why we we you know created the engineer assist mode. Um, so basically, if you if you actually do the peer demo, you can see what it is, right? So peer's not off, it, it, although it's going off and doing its thing. It, it's actually got a live uh, a live a live run sheet of exactly what it's doing. So when the engineer is looking at peer that's doing the activity, it actually can identify all the items. It's logging all the detail on the fly, and it's giving you you know. You know, hope you know ninety percent of ninety nine percent of the time is giving you ticks. So this is completed. Sometimes it gives you an error. Sometimes it gives you a warning. But the engineer can actually see what P is doing on the fly, right? So you can say, oh, it's logging into the network. It's hitting AD. It's doing this, right? And it can actually the engineer can stop the process or continue the process. So the engineer having the power is still very important, right? Like because of the accuracy, like like you said, the hallucination of the chatbot or the or the AI doing things that the end customer doesn't actually want done, right? So by doing it in engineer assist mode, we eliminate a lot of that. 
Gotcha. Now, last sort of thought I want to want to ask about is is for some their operating procedures, their methodology for implementing their MSP. That's kind of their intellectual property. But if they're interacting with a bot that's learning, aren't what would you say to their concerns of Hey, I'm then giving my IP out to some bot that's now learning and growing and help taking it elsewhere. What's your response to that kind of thinking? Yeah, look, I think that's a very traditional way of thinking. I think what in terms of, you know, the difference between IP and goodwill in your business are two very different things, right? I think what an MSP does, the way they perform, the way they have the customer relationship, their processes, that is goodwill, right? That is that is how they run their business. Can they sell intellectual property off that basis? 99% of the time, probably not, right? So what I'm, you know, my, what I'm saying is like, we don't want to take that away from you. We want to completely complement and enhance your goodwill. We want your customers and, and your customer satisfaction to be skyrocketing week on week. You know, we want ticket time slash, which is going to improve your goodwill. We want staff retention to be high, which PIA is going to do, right? Because the staff are going to pl be playing with something really cool, right? It's technical, it's cool, and it's simple, right? So you're going to have less staff leaving your business, which is going to improve your you know, your goodwill and your IP, I guess, right? So we're here to actually help you shape and improve what you're doing in your business, not take it away from you. Gotcha. Well, if people wanted to take a look, how can they take a look at that demo you were talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So you can you can register for a demo on, uh, on online. Um, every two weeks or so, we sort of do a, a live um, uh, webinar demo. Um so just just go on the website and have and have a look and 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 request request the demo. Um, the demo goes for about you know thirty to forty minutes, um, and it covers the key elements of peer. Um, I think the important thing too that I'd like to get out there, Dave, is that you know peer isn't just a chatbot. Like we've got a full RPA automation backend, right? So if you've got automation engineers in your business and you've got a team of these guys, you know, building PowerShell scripts and and, and scripts for automation, you can actually have access to the developer side of Peer and implement those automations into Peer directly. And then Peer actually learns what those automations are and starts using them on your tickets, right? So out of the box, we're doing 60, 70 things, like 60, 70 activities and, 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 and automations. But you can add to that if you've got your own team. We provide the out of the box function for the smaller MSP that can't afford an automation engineer. But you know, for, you know, for MSPs that do have you know, the, the larger MSPs that do have automation engineers in-house. Man, this is a great tool to start plugging your scripts in and plugging your automations in and letting Peer help your engineer execute it rather than you having to give the engineer permission to content or a container and then them ex executing it and problems coming up. You know, you plug it into Peer, Peer, Peer handles the execution for you. Gotcha. Well, Christian, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much, Dave. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your time and attention. Time is a finite resource, and I really value you giving me some of yours. If you like this video, you can let me know with a like of the video, and even more valuable, hitting the subscription button. My content is all free, and I use metrics like subscriptions to pay the bills, so it has real value. The content here is produced under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you're interested in more content like this, you can get access to content early via our Patreon at patreon.com slash MSP radio. It's our give what you want model where you set the value of what you think the content is worth. If you like this podcast, you can catch it daily as the five minute news and commentary show, The Business of Tech, available on all your favorite podcatchers with links at businessof.tech. Just hit that big blue button to subscribe. Again, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen, and I really value the interaction. If you want to say something in the comments, I do respond and watch all that, and I look forward to talking to you next time.